Okay. I'd like to call the meeting of the St. Louis County Board of Zoning Adjustment to order. The board members present today are Janet Herman, Chairman, Angelia Bills, Vice Chairman, and Justin Randall, member. The BZA coordinator is Debbie Nesbitt, and staff member members are Mel Wilson and Emily Cowan, and I don't see a Paul. First, I offer into the record the affidavit of publication pertaining to today's meeting, June 2nd, 2021. The board hereby takes, a no, uh, takes official notice of and admits into evidence on the record the St. Louis County Zoning Ordinance Chapter 1003, St. Louis County Revised Ordinance 1974 is amended, <clears throat> and Chapter 1004, St. Louis County Revised Ordinance 1974 is amended. Next, I call for a motion to approve the minutes of the previous BZA meeting of May 19th, 2021. So moved. Is there a second? I'll second that. The hearing procedure is informal, but is a teleconference and is recorded. The planning staff will read each request into the record. The petitioner will be unmuted, state their name, and make a brief presentation to the board explaining the reason and hardship for the requested variance. The board will not consider financial hardships. Board members may ask questions to clarify the facts. When the board is satisfied with the material presented, the chairperson will then ask if there is anyone in favor or opposition to the request. To indicate you would like to speak, please click the hand next to your name. If any comments were submitted, staff will read them into the record. Before a call for the vote, the petitioner may request a continuance in order to bring in additional documentation. The board may also request a continuance to gather additional information or for a visit to the site. Once comments have been heard, the chairperson will call for a vote. At that time, the discussion is ended and no further discussion is permitted. The board will generally make a decision today. Two members of the board must vote in favor of the petition for it to be approved. If a variance is approved, you have six months to obtain the necessary permits or establish the use requested or the variance will expire. The petitioner or any interested party has the right of appeal to the St. Louis County Circuit Court. This must be done within 30 days of the decision. Paperwork indicating the board's decision will be mailed to the petitioners. I do not see the petitioner for the first request. Debbie, do you know if someone else would be representing the petitioner? Oh, you are muted, Debbie. I hear you too. Unmuted. There we go. Do you know who else might present this request? No, I do not. Uh, I believe his daughter or granddaughter did last time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, do you want to go on to the next one? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so we'll go and 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 see and see folks uh panelists. 52-21 Elias Cantu requests an exception to the rear yard regulations for the purpose of constructing an above ground swimming pool and pool equipment at 4471 Ashford Court, maintaining a rear yard of four feet in lieu of 15 feet, as required by the R3 residence district regulations and the density development procedure of the St. Louis County Zoning Ordinance. Yes. Elias, you were unmuted to give your presentation. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Oh, uh, yes. I don't know, for some reason, yes. I'm not hearing anybody very loudly. Is there any? Okay. I could hear Angelia then. Okay. Okay, we'll try so to go ahead. Yes. Petitioner, try again, please. Yes, can you hear me okay? I, I can hear you, but not great, but anyway, great. go ahead. Let me try to, I'll try to be loud. <laughs> okay. So um, if I, I'm wanting to construct a 24 foot above ground pool. And I have, uh, I guess, what would be considered a narrow uh, backyard uh, to my two rear neighbors. Um, and where, if I was to be able to meet the 15 feet that's required for the pool and equipment, uh, the, the pool would have to be constructed, you know, approximately four feet from my back door. So, um, 
you know, I, I think we have in there a variance of four feet. I don't think when it actually gets constructed that it will be that close. I'm, I'm looking more towards six to seven feet. Um, the, the neighbor, um, I've gotten a, a written uh, documentation from both my neighbors that they are in support of the pool to be constructed uh, in the location that I've asked. And uh, one of my rear neighbors already has an above ground pool and the other neighbors, the area where it's going to be, there's that's actually the very corner of their yard and uh, nothing would be damaged or just no destruction if the pool were to leak or catastrophically fail in any in any okay. for any reason. What what would um why couldn't you shift that over to the left a little bit, you know, like where that says the pool pump is? And it seems like you that would even give you more uh, footage of setback. Is there a reason why you could do you see what I'm talking about? Yeah, I think the reason we didn't want to shift it to the left is there's uh there's a large tree uh to the left on my property. Uh, the area which which the area where we're wanting to put it next, a little bit to the right um and it it receives the most sun during the day uh so I, we're afraid if we put it under a shade tree not only will we will we get uh, leaves but it will it will also require some kind of heating mechanism so that you could stay uh comfortable to swim in it okay and your pump's going back there also correct Yes, ma'am. Oh, there it did. Um, so that dig, that area you have there is not the actual placement uh, of the pool. It's going to be a little bit to the right. Uh, that a little was bit what? Go ahead. A little bit to the right of that, did you say? Uh, yes. If you are looking back towards the fence, yes, uh, it'll be to the right. Okay. And then your neighbor back behind those bushes, uh, are they the ones that wrote the letter? Okay. Yes, both uh, the neighbor back there and there's another neighbor just to the, to the, I don't know what direction, probably to the east, okay. but uh, yeah, there's, a, I'm sorry, did somebody okay. say? That? No, I was coughing, sorry. So you're, mov you're t looking for right around moving it that to where the, um, between those the, the fir trees and the other bushes on the other side yes it'll move closer towards us from the view of this picture okay okay so that we can get full sun uh on it throughout the day okay i don't have any other questions angelia or, or no i don't have any no justin did you say yes or no okay no i'm good Okay. Uh, is there anyone on this WebEx that's in favor or opposition? Please hit the hand by your name. I don't see anyone. Okay. 52 dash 21. I'm going to vote uh, to vote in favor of um, the uh, variance. Um, the hardship, I mean, I, I guess. Well, not so much for hardship, but they would like the most sun for the pool. Obviously, if you're having a pool. And um, the neighbors don't have any opposition to it. And the petitioner thinks it's going to be more like six to seven feet instead of five. So they could amount. I second it. Uh, I'm going to disagree. Okay. All right. Um, so. I don't have my paperwork, so I don't know their name, but oh, Mr. Franklin. All right, so your paperwork will be mailed to you. Okay, okay. thank you. Fifty-three dash twenty-one, Mike Franklin, request an exception to the rear yard regulations for the purpose of constructing a deck at forty-three sixty-one Hawkins Glen Way. Maintaining a rear yard of six feet in lieu of 15 feet as required by the R4 residence district, light, district regulations of the St. Louis County Zoning Ordinance and PEU Ordinance 20,464. Sorry, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. 
Okay. So what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to uh, add a deck on the back of our house. Um, I'm looking for a hardship due to irregular and irregular yard size in the shape of it. I've got nobody to the side of me. There's a creek to the very back of me. Uh, easement wise, that should be no problem if a vehicle has to get through to be able to um, do any kind of work. Um, it's going to be, uh, the deck is gonna be 24 feet long by 12 feet deep. And I'm hoping, I'm asking that you guys allow me to be able to build this with our little easement. And honestly, I don't know what else to really ask or say. I'm just kind of uh, new to this, trying to figure it out. We're just trying to upgrade our house, upgrade the value and have a nice deck that uh, we can sit on. If you look at that picture there, that deck there is, um, it's been there for a long time. We just bought the house uh, four months ago and that was in place, but it's not very stable. And I found out after going through this whole process, they didn't even get an approval for it. So I want to be able to put up a nice deck that adds value to the house and that's actually going to be stable. And the other concept that we have is we've got two dogs and, you know, I'm kind of lazy. So running up and down the stairs really uh, is a pain in the butt to let the dogs out. So we have steps that would come off the deck from the main level so the dogs can go out and do their business. Mr. Franklin, is the size that you're requesting the size of this existing deck or is it bigger? It's bigger. It's okay. bigger. It's going to be, um, let's see, the existing deck, I think, I think it's going to be double the size of the existing deck. But if you look at the, if you look at this deck and you kind of, well, these pictures, you can see behind us, there's just a creek. It's not going out any further than where it's now. It's just going closer to the left-hand side where that gate is. And on the side of that property, there's a, it's a common area. So there's no, uh, there's just trees and some woods and a, in, in a common area. So it won't affect anybody's house. And actually the, the way the trees are, you won't even be able to see the deck from driving down the road. Thank you. You're welcome. Angelia, do you have any other questions? Oh, I don't have any questions. Thank you. Okay. Is, is there anyone on this WebEx that is in favor or opposition? Please hit the hand next to your name. I don't see anyone. Okay. Hearing none, 53-21, I vote to approve the variance as advertised. Uh, I don't think that it's impeding on any neighbor's property. So I approve it. And, and Angela, Leah, I think you can also find a hardship for the irregular shape lot for sure. Yes. Uh, so I would second that. Okay, and I'll um, I'll agree. So that's three. So we will send your uh, paperwork to you. Okay. Oh, can I ask a quick question? Wait a minute. Oh, wait sorry. a minute. It's, I'm sorry. Somebody seems to be trying to. The it first says, petitioner is here now, Janet, if you want to go back after this one. Pardon me? The petitioner for the first one that we skipped. Oh, AR okay. I thought it was somebody that was trying to speak on this one. Sorry. Okay. All right. Well, all right. we're all in favor, so we'll send you your paperwork. Okay. Can I ask you a quick cool question? So, um, the deck people are supposed to get started by the end of this month. Do I let them know that you approved in the paperwork's in route? Continue. Continue with Debbie, your... can you? Oh, Debbie, you just muted yourself. Sorry. Continue with your permitting process. Okay. Contact your plan reviewer tomorrow. Perfect. Thank you guys very much. Okay. You have a good day. Thank you. Thanks. Janet, would you like to go back to the first? Go to the, back to the first one. Okay. okay.
51-21 Saban Selezic, please excuse me, requests an exception to maintain a 22.1 foot by 27.1 foot, 600 square foot detached garage slash storage building, which will be more than half the footprint of the home, taller than the primary use, 30% lot coverage in lieu of 7% lot coverage, and to the side and rear yard regulations at 734 Regina Avenue, maintaining both side yards of zero feet in lieu of five feet and a rear yard of one foot in lieu of 15 feet as required by the R5 residence district regulations of the St. Louis County Zoning Ordinance. So LM, are you going to make the presentation? Yes, I'm going to make the presentation. My sister could to make it. Okay, if you would just identify, uh, identify your full name for the record. Please. My name is Alan Stelezic. Okay, please go ahead. Okay, so okay. what happened? We had a previous garage there that was a smaller, that size, and that that garage, the garage wall was the fence that was separating me from my neighbors. That's how it used to be originally. And it was all old and falling apart. So we went ahead and took it down. And recently we were working on the house and we wanted storage to put stuff in there. We needed a garage to be able to do that. So we went ahead and called those cardboard people. They come by and they just set up the garage. So we poured a concrete slab on the bottom and they came and installed the garage for us. But we didn't know that we were gonna need a permit for that type of stuff because it was a metal structure. They came and set it up like in a couple of hours, three, four, five hours. And we didn't have no clue that we needed it. But all of our neighbors, the ones next to us, they had no problem. It's just the neighbors that's like three houses down, which I won't see because it doesn't even bother them. And the reason is because we own both properties. So we own 734 and we own 730 Regina Avenue. So we have two properties and that garage is on the 734 Regina Avenue. And there's space, you can walk around the garage. So that's the fence that goes to our neighbors. And then the other side, it's all our yard because we own both of these properties right here. You can see the post where the previous fence with that were two different houses. So we had took that fence down and made it all open. So that's how we'll want to see if we'll be able to get to keep it all of our storage needs and stuff like that. So what what did you say your hardship was again? I'm, I was looking, I'm trying to look for my schedule here. I can't see. What did you say your hardship was? My what? Hardship. Hardship was that again? Just, just the reason that it had to be built in that spot. The reason it had to be built because when we're because we're from Texas and we moved to Missouri and we had a lot of stuff, but in the meantime, we we're working on this house. It was getting fully renovated. So we didn't have nowhere place to put all of our stuff. And we had a bunch of stuff that we needed to put in there. And also when we work on the house keep lumber in there or just plywood and, and so we can use it in rainy days so nothing will get wet and damaged. And the old garage was falling apart so we couldn't use that garage. It wasn't even safe to use it. So was the old garage in the same spot? Yeah, but uh, it was in the same spot, but the wall was the fence for the other neighbors. So the wall of the garage was the fence to separate me from my neighbors. So we have took that down, put a fence up, and moved the garage a little bit more to the left to our both properties. About any size garage is going to be too big for this property. So um... because we do own these two properties, the own Dala and the one next to it, and we have took down the fence. You also own lot six? 
Yes. Uh, yes, we own the property yeah. next to it. Twelve to the left, <laughs> lot, lot six. Yes, yeah, seven thirty Regina Avenue. Mm -hmm. So when we took down the previous garage, we moved it more on our side, so the neighbors, so the garage wall wouldn't be on the fence, and we put a real fence and moved the garage more to the left on our side because we own both these properties. <clears throat> And was that was that original structure always a house? Uh, what do you mean original structure? Yeah, the, the front the of it was a house. The twenty-eight by twelve was a house. So, yeah, in the front. This is a question for the planning staff. Is there a minimum? allowance for a garage um, regardless of the size of the existing single family structure it goes by the size of the house uh, the half footprint of the house okay so there's not like a guarantee like 500 square feet of garage 400 I, I think what it says is 400 square feet or 50% of the time. That's what that, all right, that makes sense. And I just wanna add that um, if the board did grant this variance, the property owner would be required still to get a cross, uh, cross access agreement because the parcels are separate. Um, even if they own both parcels, they still have to provide that um, document because it does travel with the property. Um, and, and I know that's something that the zoning enforcement officer was interested in, in communicating to the board. Yeah, as well, I was gonna mention, we were gonna make the concrete all the way to the garage on the other side, so it doesn't cross from this property over to the garage. So we're gonna make that path on 734 to go to the side concrete all the way to the storage, the metal building. So it doesn't cut through the both yards. Okay. That was oh. just temporary because it used to be so muddy you couldn't even park the car with sink and stuff. Okay, uh, Angelina and Justin, do you have any more questions? No. I guess I have just one. Based on the pictures, you've got a work vehicle there. You're not running a business out of this? No, no business out of there. It's for, just for storage needs, no business. We're not even allowed to have business. This is Lee May. This is not commercial or anything like that. That work that work van we sold or the work truck that was that was already sold. Okay. Um is there anyone in favor or opposition on this WebEx? Please hit the hand next to your name. I don't see anyone. I'm struggling to find a real hardship. Uh, the lot's really small, I understand that, but I think it could have still met the setbacks. Or at least closer to the setbacks. Because as you see where that, you can see kind of where that fence used to be, as you can see on the siding, that's where the fence used to be. You can, if you look down by the garage, you'll see the fence posts, we still left them. Under normal circumstances, they would be able to side and rear yards of three feet because it's R5 zoning. Yeah, I understand that, but it was also previously that the old garage wall used to be the fence for the other neighbors. And we moved it more to the left and we put an actual fence up. So there's an actual fence and not the garage wall to be the fence for both of us. 
on the right side. And it's not gonna be anything chemicals and none of that stuff that will be hazardous or can catch fire or anything like that. Cause we didn't even know when we came down here that we needed a permit or anything like that. So, and we already wasted a lot of money for the garage, the concrete slab, and it really doesn't bother all. the neighbors over here. They all say it's a beautiful garage. We're just increasing the value of the neighborhood. It looks good. So, Because if we knew we had to get the permits and that, we would have done the way we're supposed to be able to do it. All right. Mel, um, can you go back to the first slide that talks about all the variances that they need? Yeah. And Debbie, you said it would be three feet because of the accessory structure. Is that correct? Because of the zoning. The zoning. I'm going to make a motion that uh, we deny the request. I'm going to make a, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, and I'm going to make that motion that it got a, um, I mean, it's taken, it's, it's, it's larger than allowed at a minimum of 400 square feet. If it was 400 square feet and it still need, needed some setback variances, I think you've got a potential hardship for the width of that lot at 25 feet. That's pretty narrow. But the fact that they've built over the even 400 square feet, I, just, I think they've, they've created the hardship. So that's my why I'm recommending the denial. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to vote to approve the variant. Excuse me, the variance. Um, given the small, narrow narrowness of the lot, I understand what Justin's saying. the The lot is so so narrow. Um, you hardly get much in there, and uh, with the house being so small, <clears throat> um, I don't know that they could have much of any kind of structure on there for for their. Um, uh, you know, to hide their prop, their uh, personal belongings, and um, since the petitioner said that um, that the neighbors think it is uh, helping to beautify the neighborhood, uh, kind of helps me along with that decision. So I'm going to vote to approve. I I, I vote to approve as well. I, I think that it'll uh, improve the appearance of the lot, uh, and I believe that they do need it and that they did build it unaware of uh, the rules, even though it's not really impeding on anyone. And the neighbors seem to uh, be in approval of it too, because they haven't, uh, you know, they, they haven't came out against it. Oh. Okay. All right, so uh, the board approved it and uh, you'll be receiving your paperwork in the mail. Oh, all right, thank you very much, guys, appreciate it. Next is 54-21 Tyson Schultz. 54-21 Tyson Schultz requests an exception to the lot coverage requirements to replace an above ground swimming pool and repair an existing deck at 1424 Green Elm Drive, maintaining lot coverage of 13.8% in lieu of 7% as required by the R3 residence district regulations and the density development procedure of the St. Louis County Zoning Ordinance. Okay. I'm sorry, are you able to hear me okay? Yes, yes. go ahead. Yes. Yes. Thank you. First off, thank you guys for your time. Um, so I'm, I'm currently uh, actually in the middle of selling my home. My home is under contract. 
Uh, and during the uh, inspection, the county inspection, uh, we learned that uh, we actually needed to have a permit for a pool that we, we actually replaced an existing pool, uh, the same size uh, as, uh, as was originally there uh, about four years ago. So we found out that we needed a permit, didn't, didn't know that. So we are working on getting a permit for that, uh, that pool. In the midst of that, we have provided some measurements and learned that the deck that was actually uh, standing when I purchased the home 10 years ago uh, is uh, six feet uh, from from my fence, which and it's supposed to be eight feet from my fence. Um, so I'm asking for, uh, I, I guess, uh, a waiver on that, uh, that variance. Um, I have two letters from from neighbors. One right next to right next door to my house, actually, where that deck is closest to the fence, um, stating that uh, that deck was there when I purchased the home, and then also from another neighbor who was the first on the cul-de-sac, who uh, who verifies that the deck is over 25 years old. Um, we replaced some posts on on the deck during the uh, you know for for the sale of the house. Uh, but the deck itself is the original deck. So everything, looking at this picture, so everything is already there? Yes, correct. And I, I can't find my paperwork on it, but what, um, if somebody could tell me, so you're looking at, you're asking for a side yard of 18, if we could go back to the um, first. It's part. actually for the lot coverage. Correct. Oh, okay. That's right. That's Thirteen point eight in lieu of seven percent. Okay, only that. Just, just the lot coverage. Okay. Um, but could we still go back to the the? Uh, I can't. I can't find any of my paperwork on my phone. <laughs> okay. All right. So they're kind of narrow narrow lots again. Okay. And, and where is this home? What area? It's in Greenmar Estates uh, in unincorporated St. Louis County near Fenton. Okay. Oh, okay. Your hardship. The hardship is that the the deck was existing when I purchased the home. the The deck was was there and the fence was there. Um, and during the original inspection, I guess when I purchased the home ten years ago, this 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 never came up. Um, it happened to be snowing on the day that that inspection occurred. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so um, that's the hardship: is that it's it's an existing deck from from twenty five years ago. Okay, Justin, do you have any questions? No, I think. Okay, is there is there anyone on this WebEx that's in favor or opposition? Please hit the hand next to your name to speak. I don't see anyone. Okay, so this is back to 5121, correct? This, this is 5421. Oh, 54. 54. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. I, don't, I can't find my paperwork this way. Okay, 54-21. I'm going to, I'm going to vote to approve the variance as advertised. Um, the, even though that's quite a larger amount of, um, uh, lot coverage. I don't think those lots in, are, are fairly narrow in there and pretty small. And, um, the deck had already been there. And so they just wanted a little extra for the swimming pool. So I don't think it's going to be harmful for any of the neighbors. I second it. I'll concur. Okay, your paperwork will be sent to you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Okay. I do not see the petitioner for 5521. Um, Debbie, do you know of anyone who might, I don't see James Slam or Anthony Sandstone. Did you, I'm having trouble hearing everybody tonight. But, um, did you say there doesn't seem to be anyone there for that? Debbie, do you know who might present it? No, I don't. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Let's go. Let's go. Go to the next one, then, Janet. Pardon me. Pardon me. 
Should we continue to 21? Okay. 55 21 will continue till a little bit later. 56 21 is it Pazalik request an exception to the front yard regulations for the purpose of constructing a roof over a front porch at 9626 Dana Avenue, maintaining a front yard of six feet in lieu of 20 feet along Dana Avenue as required by the R5 residence district regulations of the St. Louis County Zoning Ordinance. Is that you are unmuted to give your presentation? Hi, uh, my name is Hughes. I'm a uh, property 9626 Dana Avenue. Last, last year in November, I built a front porch and uh, uh, I need to build the, the roof is because the reason I do the roof because it's uh, it's always sun that, that you know I can even sit down maybe in the morning two hours to sit you know I need uh, and birds is, is it's all over the place you know they're doing stuff all over the place their, their business you know and uh, that's the reason I need it's gonna be nice for the street too. For the neighborhood. That's it. So, are you just replacing it, or are you making it larger? No, uh, ex extended. It's going to be extended. I have uh, like four feet right now. I built a uh, ten feet long porch last year. And now it's going to be like. Uh, I guess six feet longer extended to the street. The roof is being extended for the yes. whole porch. Uh, whole porch, I did it last year. And this is just the roof now. Yes, it's yes. going to be roof now. Yes. To come out where those posts are on the top there. Oops, I guess. What is the hardship? Just the hardship is gonna. It's I. I can even use that port because it's sun all the time. You know, I would. You can see the tree, tree next to to the porch. It's always leaves on the on the porch. You know, and uh, I don't want to cut this because it's not tree. Okay. So Mel, is the deck itself or the extension of the porch? Okay, and now it's the extension that he wants to do on the roof. That's yes, the problem. Sir. Yes, sir. Debbie, did they have to get a variance for the porch last year? Actually, the, the, the distance is measured from the bottom steps. So the steps are partially included in that, um, won't come out that far over the steps. So, I mean, it currently looks like just even with the existing Porch, it may be already over the 20 foot setback. Correct. Because that sticks out probably, well, I think the gentleman said four feet. And the front of that house is right on the property line at this, or the 20 foot setback. His plan is saying he the porch is at 10 feet now. And then I made it. Six feet because of the steps. Okay. But so, but his current steps are already almost to the back of the sidewalk. Correct. So this will just um, legalize those. Which those are those are all over this neighborhood.
Angelia, do you have any questions? Uh, you know, I'm looking at the picture. And so basically he wants, he wants to extend the roof to cover the whole porch landing. Then is that what he's trying yes, to do? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Sense. And but what, what, what we're really granting the overall variance is for the steps. Correct Debbie. Because the steps will come down to 6 feet. Correct. Um. Actually, I, I'm looking and he did get a variance in 2020. Or a front yard of 10 in lieu of 20 along Dana. And a front yard of 17 in lieu of 20 along Dana court for the porch. So now he's back just to get the, um, to get the, the uh, to add the roof. roof yeah. I'll make a motion to approve the requested variance for the proposed setback of six feet for the steps and 10 feet for the proposed uh, roof in accordance with the variance granted in 2020. Justin, I, I need to go back and ask if there is anybody here in favor. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, okay, sir, is someone. Is there anyone that's in favor or opposition? Please hit the a hand next to your name. I don't see anyone. Okay. All right. Thanks. So now I'll make a motion to allow the variance uh, for the proposed setback of six feet along Dana Avenue uh, for the existing steps and ten feet for the extension of the roof in accordance with the variance granted in twenty twenty. I'll second that. I concur. Fifty-seven twenty-one Preserve Development LLC, McKelvey Home, requests an exception to the front yard regulations and the sign regulations for the purpose of constructing a new subdivision development at sixty-nine zero one Mackenzie Road. Maintaining a monument sign of with a front yard of seven feet in lieu of 20 feet and a width of 30 feet in lieu of 15 feet. The monument pillar with a front yard of 10 feet in lieu of 50 feet and a height of 12 feet in lieu of eight feet as required by the R3 residence district and the NU non-urban district regulations of the St. Louis County zoning ordinance and PEU ordinance 27,844. Mr. Bold, you're unmuted to give your presentation. All right. Uh, is, there, is there any way I can share my screen? Is that possible? Sure, I will make you the presenter. All right, I just want to, to, it's a. You should be able to share your screen now. All right. It's coming up. It's coming up. Sure. So um, my name is David Bowles. I'm with Bowles Engineering. And I'm representing the Preserve Development LLC on this development, which is really McKelvey Homes and Payne. And this is the Resurrection Cemetery, which is in South, it's in the uh, Afton area. And this, this project, I'll show you what the project looks like. This is the overall, just to give you a scale of the project. It's 188 single family homes. And the site, which is, this is just a portion of the Resurrection Cemetery, but 69 acres. And recently, this site was rezoned for, with this PEU on this on the property. And I just wanted to tell you that we had unanimous support of the Planning Commission and the County Council when we did this. Um, and what we're seeking is a couple of variances for the entrance monument. So the first one, if you can see it right here, number four, that is to build this monument right here. And so going back to the to the site plan. This is Mackenzie Road right here on the east side. And you come off of Mackenzie right across from a, a school that's across. And then we're going to propose a roundabout here. So when you when you look at this exhibit to the uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. So sure. could you point so I don't know that area, but could you go back to the other one, Mel, please? Oh. Yeah. You want me to go to the aerial? 
No. Oh, I'm sorry. You're you're doing it. No, the the next one that you said. Oh, this is where we're going to do a roundabout, and there's okay. The, okay. So so this is McKenzie right here, on well, the east side. Where are you side. saying right here? I can't see though. Oh, I'm sorry. It's on the east side. You can't see my cursor. No, I. Oh, now I do. Sorry. Okay. All now right. So along the, along the right hand side of this drawing, that is McKenzie Road. All right. Okay. And where you see this roundabout right here, that is a new roundabout that we're proposing. So our entrance off of McKenzie would be right in this location that I'm circling. And you'll come to this roundabout. If you go to the right, it would take you to the cemetery uh, where the grave sites are, and they're going to build a chapel up in that area. And if you go these other legs, take you to the single family portion that we're proposing. So I'm going to go back to the to the entrance. So this is the entrance. Okay. And this is Mackenzie Road right here. And uh, to tell you the truth, you know what? If I do this real quick, it'll it'll help you. This is the school, and I'll show you. This is this is the entrance. That the school is there, and this is the the, the um. The where we're that's not it, but <laughs> sorry. But but that's that's how we're we're uh hang on a second here. Got stuff in my way. All right. So so the school is is down here, here at the entrance off of McKenzie, which is the state highway. You come in. And then if you go to the right on this roundabout, this is what a cemetery is. And as you come around the roundabout, these two roads take you to the single family portion. Okay. And, uh -huh. and what we're proposing is to build this entrance monument right here that's shown in this color exhibit here in this mm -hmm. location. Okay. That, that's that's one of our variance requests. The second request is similar, and I'm just gonna scroll down here. It's to build a pillar type of monument right here, which is right next to McKinsey Road. And okay, now I'm, I lost your cursor now. Can you? Um, oh, okay. It's yeah. white, so it's hard to find. Oh, I don't know. I, now I lost it. Yeah, it's probably oh, okay. it's I got it. Okay. So this is the pillar monument, which here's a picture of it on the right here. So that would be closer. That would be close to the road. Definitely. Correct. That's closer to McKenzie Road, and mm -hmm. and our problem here, and, and you know what my real uh, hardships are, is one, I'm required, and I have to put my entrance into our subdivision across from the school at the signalized intersection. So I can't really move where I build this. And secondly, this access has to serve more than my subdivision because I have an existing cemetery here. So this roundabout is, is something that I, I have to put in here in order to, because I, there's four different directions of the traffic needs to go. And because of the scale of this, this whole intersection, we're trying to make this really, really beautiful. These are landscaping mounds, by the way, here. And we're trying to make this world really beautiful, but somehow we have to segregate or separate the entrance to the cemetery versus the entrance to the single family. So this is where we're, we're I'm going to go back up to the other one. This is where we're proposing this really nice looking monument here. And if it's not a large monument, you won't, you won't know that this is the subject. So we're trying to, because of the scale of this, we're trying to, you know, prominently show that this is the entrance. So so the four or the variances we're requesting is for, for this monument here, I think the ordinance says that it can only be 15 feet long. And we're actually going to have three sections of it, but but it's 30 feet long. Um the the second and, and because it's over six feet, because it's over six feet high, I need a variance for the front yard setback. Normally, you would have a, but all all entrance monuments would are within that setback, so it's not. But because it's more than six feet high, I need that one. And then at the pillar location, what I need is again because it's more than six feet high, I need a setback off of the right of way, and I also need one because because it's twelve. We want this to be twelve feet high, and and the ordinance um, is eight feet. So those are the those are the variances that are easy variances you're looking at. So I can answer any questions that you might have. Oops. 
trying to go back to that. I may have confused you, but. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think I have it now. Oh, Justin or Angelia, do you have any questions? No. Is there a reason why you need 12 feet at the entrance at McKenzie versus the required eight? Or the allowable eight? Well, I guess the, the main reason is if you, if I had a picture of this entrance, there's a there's a large fence along here, and we're trying to you know show that this is actually an entrance to the subdivision and not just an entrance to the to the uh, cemetery. So this is this is really a busy area right here with the school across. And this is a five lane section of road here. So we're trying to you know prominently because of this, like I said, the scale of this entrance. A little six foot monument here isn't going to really draw people into this into this development. So that that's what we're trying to do with this. And I wish I could have gotten you a um, better view of the entrance how it exists. Well, I think you had one earlier. Hey, Debbie, if they were to meet the uh, eight foot requirement on that entry pillar, does that reduce any of the required setback? Yes. What would their setback be then? Then, then they could maintain the, if they come down to the eight feet, I don't know because Right now, that's in non-urban, so they would definitely need a variance in in that respect, also. Okay. Yeah. If it's yeah. So so that monument is going right here, that that uh, that twelve foot one, and you know you have power poles here, you have signalized intersection, which by the way we're upgrading this and putting a crosswalk in for the for the school, which is across the street. So we just need to look. To, we need to make this look nice and. Like I said, this is a, everybody was excited about this development. The, the council uh, was excited about it. The planning commission was excited because it's a new development down in Aston. And in order to, uh, although I think they have 200 people already interested in the 190 lots. So that's how excited people are. We just want to make it look, look really, really good. Going in. But that, that monument is going to be back here. And if it's six foot tall, it's going to be, you know, blocked by this fence and by this power pole, and we just need something prominent that looks good there. I would just like to add um, that the department is in support of this request, and um, originally it would have been, might have been possible for the tower, the pillar sign location to have been rezoned to the R2, which would have, you know, or excuse me, the R3, which would have lessened that setback requirement. Um, but it just wasn't um, quite as clear then what might be included and where their sign might need to go. Um, but the, the department is in, does recommend approval of this request. Okay, uh, Angela, yeah. does anyone have any other questions? No. Okay, is anyone here speaking? Oh, Justin, were you gonna say something? No, I'm good. Oh, <coughs> excuse me. Is there anyone on this WebEx that's in favor or opposition? Please hit the hand next to your name to speak. I don't see anyone. And hey, please hearing anyone? Yes. yes, hearing none, 57-21, I believe. I uh, vote to approve the variance as advertised and the hardship being the fence that's in front of the area. I will second. I'll concur. Okay, your Thank paper you will be much. mailed to you. Great, we appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay. 58 21, every child's hope requested an exception to the regulations that govern the enlargement, extension, construction, reconstruction, or structural alteration of a non conforming use, land, or structure for the purpose of constructing a new residential housing facility at 82. St. Charles Rock Road, 
as required by section 1003.170 non-conforming uses, bans, and structures of the St. Louis County Zoning Ordinance. Mr. Peebles, you are unmuted to give your presentation. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, Commissioner. My name is Chris Peebles. I'm with Frontenac Engineering. I'm here today on behalf of the Thomas Hope. I am their civil engineer for the project. On a representative, on a representative today. Um, the reason we are here today asking for a variance is because under the current land usage, or, I'm sorry, zoning, which is non-urban district, it is required for any new improvements to get approved for variance of those new improvements. So I don't know if there's another slide showing what the improvements are, um, but um, what Every Town Hope has proposed is currently there are two structures that sit in the project area. Um, Every Town Hope will just will demo those two buildings. Those two buildings will be removed and will be replaced with one singular one story structure. Um, that one story structure will house actually a smaller number of, of residents. Um, there will be no increase in staffing. There will be no increase in parking. And so, therefore, we do, do not believe that it would create any uh, additional hardship to the surrounding neighborhood and communities. So, that is why we are asking for a variance, um, just because of its land use and zoning and the, um, the fact that they're um, erecting new improvements on the site. All right. And, and this is for uh, children of, or, um, foster, that don't have homes or? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a combination of, of that. So, it's actually a, a residential facility. For underserved youth, um, it also the campus also houses a a school for those same residents. Um, the, the the school and other administrative buildings are outside of the project limits. Okay, um, could would you, oh, um, that Mel or someone go back to that first slide showing the? Okay, thanks. Oh, whoop, no, no, the other one. Yeah, that's great. Okay. I need the aerial view, please. So two of those are going to be demolished. Or is that what you're talking about? Yes, ma'am. The two buildings um, located directly in the center of the screen will be demolished. Okay. And then one, just one building will be replacing it. Yes, ma'am. Um, actually, less capa lower capacity, um, so no increase in residents, and also no increase in staff or parking. Okay. All right. I don't have any other questions. So, Justin or Angelia, do you? No, I'm good. Okay. Is there anyone on this WebEx that's in favor or opposition? Please hit the hand next to your name to speak. I don't see anyone. Okay. 58 21. I'm going to vote to approve the variance as advertised. The hardship being, um, well, they're just taking down two buildings and replacing it with one building. So, there's really no change to the um, in the same amount of people, well, less people being there and uh, no more staff. So the parking's the same. Uh, so there, you know, really isn't any other change except they're going from two buildings to one. So no detriment to the neighborhood. I'll second. Muted, Angelia. I concur. Sorry about that. Okay, great. Okay, so your paperwork will be mailed to you. Thank you guys, you have a great evening. Okay, thank you. So 55 never showed up, 55-21, Mel? No, I don't, the only people left are this last petitioner and staff. So I don't see the, I don't see 55-21. Okay, so 55-21 will be continued uh, for next time. Was there anyone here to, you don't see anybody that was here to speak for that, right? No. No, I don't see anyone. Okay. Okay. Well, I guess that's it. I don't know what's happened today, but I didn't I I didn't get any sound hardly at all from Debbie. I didn't understand what she was saying. And Mel, even you guys were not very loud to me. I don't know. Do you think it's on my end? I I could hear other people in the petition. I don't know. I know, you know, Debbie's using one of the new computers we have with you know, maybe Debbie needs to use her headset. Um, Emily usually uses her headset, but since we are both in here, she didn't. So maybe it's maybe we do need to use our headsets then, because then the microphone's right by our mouth. Yeah, I could hear everyone well. Yeah, as long as I turn my speaker up when Debbie was 
talking, I could hear her, but then I had to make sure I turned it back down. Well, I was trying to turn mine up, but I think mine was at full value, but yeah, I, it was like, I couldn't hear anything. Well, anyway, that's the first time that's happened, so hmm. we won't worry about it. I don't know why I had so much trouble. It won't accept my uh, email when I was trying to get in. We a lot. There was a lot of trouble getting in this time. I'm not sure what the issue was. Yeah. Then I went back and looked at the at the number, you know, meeting number and stuff. And I put all the 25 things in there, and mm -hmm. it wouldn't take that. It said it needed my the Earl. Or didn't I? That, that's when I went back out and I saw yours. But okay. Well, anyway, I guess I'll see you guys in two weeks. Okay. okay.